Okay, here's the pivot table that I have filtered and sorted the way that I want. And uh, here on the options tab of the pivot table tools is this magic button that is uh, disabled for most pivot tables, but for for power pivot it's enabled and uh, I can convert to formulas. And what it's going to do now is go and take every cell in my pivot table and replace it with a formula that returns the same result. And so there it is, it's done. And you see that, if I click around, you can see that the formula bar is showing me the formulas. Um, if I want to, I can, you know, I can treat these things exactly like I would normal spreadsheet cells. So I can insert, um, I can insert rows in the middle of the report. I can insert columns. These are things that you can't do with the pivot table. Um, I can, if I want to just delete something, I can. So for instance, the grand total down here, I don't really want that. Um, you know, I don't have to find some sort of option to get rid of it. I can just delete those, and they're they're gone. Um, if I wanted to move something, I could move it over here. I don't know why I would want to do that, but but I could if I wanted. Um, and uh, let's take a look in particular at at a few cells here. So it's it's these these two and this one. These are the three cells that we're going to look at in detail in terms of the formulas. Oh, one other thing is that the slicers still work. So if I click around here, the report reflects that selection. Um, that's kind of cool. And uh, okay, so this formula here, I select Edger and James, cube member. Uh, it's basically we can skip over the, the the syntax for a moment, but think of this cube member formula as saying this cell now represents Edger and James, and this string Edger and James is being returned from the database. Uh, it's actually you know, being pulled out of the Power Pivot database. Um, this one is also a cube member, and it's basically representing the rushing yards measure that I've defined in previous posts. And then this one is cube value. So this is actually going and fetching a number, and it's more of a query against the Power Pivot database. And if I put this formula into edit mode, you will see that it's referencing this cell and this cell. So it's taking the intersection of the Edger and James uh, player with the rushing yards measure and that is the number that's being returned. You'll also see that the slicers, there's, it's referencing two slicers uh, in the formula which, which is what allows the formula to respect the, um, the slicers over here. I'll explain all of this a bit more uh, after the video but I thought that um, this particular demonstration was, was much easier to see in, uh, in video than it was uh, to explain it in a series of screenshots. So catch you back in the post here in a second.